Uh, today, our topic that we are planning to discuss uh, uh, is hospitality, the survival, and uh, first is the challenges, and then is the survival. But personally, I think uh, we've, we've had a lot of challenges all along, right from the time hospitality started its uh, uh, existence to now. So we can first probably go with the uh, challenges and then proceed towards the opportunities wherein we, uh, we have more of hope for the youngsters who are here in the webinar who can look forward to what opportunities they have in the future. So, uh, sir, um, Mr. Teneti, can we start with you? Sir, can you please uh, talk a little Thank bit you, about Sirisha. the survival and the opportunities here? Thank you, Sirisha. See, initially, I would like to say it is so sad that we all uh, stuck in the middle of uh, the COVID uh, in, and lockdown. The hospitality industry was booming oh, uh, leaps and bounds. Unfortunately, when this took place, uh, the complete shutdown, almost every single hotel worldwide was shut down. Only few hotels, people, uh, the guests who got stuck in their uh, individual hotels, individual destinations, so they had stayed back. Nevertheless, uh, we as a hospitality uh, experts, uh, we have uh, catered to all these people who have staggered in these hotels. So it's a great uh, achievement from our uh, fraternity. Coming back to the hotel industry, we had a recession in 2010. We had uh, demand and supply. We had a uh, lot of uh, challenges facing the occupancy levels and so on. Uh, gradually, the business started uh, growing and uh, the hotels were doing extremely well. And unfortunately, COVID had hit us. Coming back to the food and beverage, the e-commerce is taken over. It's a revolution. E-commerce is basically online uh, ordering and so on. It's doing extremely well. And uh, unfortunately, most of the cities, most of the places were shut down slowly. I think, God willingly, it's going to open very shortly in the next couple of days, at least in Telangana and most of the rest of the country, except uh, 11 states, which I don't wish to mention, but it is already in the news. So I look to the other panelists to take uh, charge and uh, express their views. Dinesh, can you just throw a little light on it? Uh, Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. But before that, I would like to request uh, Shrisha that uh, please instruct all the participants to mute uh, their mic because it's interfering a lot. So for better webinar experience, let us do that. And uh, I take it forward from uh, Mr. Tanity. I will just, uh, because a lot of uh, information we are uh, getting uh, you know, from media every day, uh, there are so many webinars happening. People are speaking that uh, big news of hotel industry or uh, rather travel industry. They every day they are speaking and we are listening. And we are uh, we we are like I think overloaded with a lot of information. And we have little idea what are the challenges. Like I'll just share through this webinar what is my mindset. And what I am doing as a hotel consultant and uh, as a owner of a restaurant, if that syncs with you, please take those learning forward. But I will tell you my observation, like definitely this industry, uh, since it's uh, like uh, inception, it is uh, being throwing uh, challenges every day. And being part of this industry, if somebody has come up uh, in this industry, they know very well that this industry, every minute, it shows different, different challenges. But yes, this is definitely a different time. But what, like every day, what I do, I just, since lockdown started, I speak to one of my relatives or my friend or a client and discuss something. But I do not like force them to, I, I ask them to choose whatever, like, uh, you know, a topic of conversation. 
so as they have chosen the topic of conversation the tone they have used and uh, uh, the kind of you know words they have used i have categorized uh, these people into four uh, zones and i'm here not talking about those zones red uh, green and orange which our government has uh, planned for combating the, uh, this coronavirus but this is like uh, most of the people are in this zone which is like fear zone people are actually definitely we all are facing not only biological virus uh, which is like corona but we are facing mental and economic virus and economic virus which is like you know now attacking the hospitality industry i'm i will be very specific to that so these people consume lot of uh, you know uh, information from media uh, like uh, you know what corona is doing in which city what is happening and all these kind of negative informations uh, so this is like these people are living with the fear so second thing but some people have started moving in they they accepted that yes few things are not in our control so they have started moving towards learning zone like i think we all are there in learning zone today because these people started attending some webinars or gathering some information uh, positive kind of information they started reading books and all third category i have put uh, some people who were talking to me like they have started learning you know uh, guitar or they have started uh, uh, they are like you know weight loss uh, this uh, you know uh, regime or they have started uh, learning guitar or something which was pending since long so those people are changing every day little little i put them in th that they have definitely growth zone but a few people that i categorize as a leadership zone people who are very sensitive that what is happening and how they can uh, find an opportunity to help society or the hospitality industry or hotels like uh, through the service or uh, creating any product right so that those people have kept in uh, like a leadership zone if i tell you about myself my restaurant is shut uh, like as everybody else is but since then i have planned like as a consultant this is my mind map okay what i have done all step like uh, from like what are the factors i could discuss here or uh, the restaurant is open every step i am planning to see how only objective is to give a fearless and very entertaining and comfortable service to my customer and every day i am cracking some or the other thing i think after some time i will be able to share these factors so what i want to do through this webinar i want to give those glasses which i am wearing through this i am seeing that yes many many times this uh, globe has gone through this kind of pandemic but every time people uh, like human being is very smart okay every time we have come up uh, very well we made it beautiful again and again we fought and we again we we have come up but every time we innovate something uh, we we come up some new solution and all so those kind of glasses we have to wear and just uh, start bridging the gap between the customer and guest experience and what we have at present it may be your product or maybe some kind of service definitely it should be like uh, safe and the touchless uh, so, uh, like uh, service to the customer and definitely we should not forget that hospitality is the the core is service that seva bhav from the heart should be there and human factor should be there with by following all the norms and all so here i just pass uh, the cue to next speaker thank you sirisha i missed the part where you asked the question sirisha can you please uh, repeat that i said uh, aditya that uh, what are the challenges that you would look at at this point in time and uh, okay. from there we could take it across oh, okay perfect first of all we need to understand that our hospitality industry itself is at risk right now we need to accept the fact that it is not going to be an easy task it is def definitely a very herculean task ahead for all of us and more than anything the best part about our industry is it is not something new for us it, we've always gone through it in the past we've already already seen it so it doesn't come as a rude shock rather a, a new lesson the way i look at it and um, if you see today's world i think the only thing which i can tell everybody is change is the answer we need to realize and we need to accept change there are many people who have this fixed knowledge that this is how things work this is how things are supposed to be but that is not exactly how it is we have to accept change and more than anything else we have to be upbeat with what's happening today because right now
whether you like it or not, the guests' expectations have now gone higher. And uh, people who come inside have access to so much information that they can literally make you or they can break you. That is the kind of social media power which is there today in the world. So we as hoteliers, we have to be very, very careful. And more than anything else, this time is not a right time. And only thing is, as far as, if you look, there are only three segments. The hoteliers, the people who work in the hotels, and the students. Everybody feel that they are all at risk. If you look at hoteliers, yes, it's a challenge, but then we'll have to face it. And this is not going to last forever. I always say that the year 2020 is survival and 2021 is revival. That is my belief always. And I've always told all my employees the same, that this year is all about survival. The next year is absolutely revival for all of us. So as far as hoteliers, yes, we'll have to go through it. And I think whoever can survive 2020 have got a very long, long, long time ahead for them. And they will survive anything, just anything. Second, as far as the employees are concerned, yes, it is a um, uh, sad state of affair in many uh, hotels, many restaurants. But at the end of it, these people who are going, they should realize that if they have left, there is something they lack. They have to make their skills better. There's something. They will get, invariably, they will get a job. And there are many opportunities available in the market. It's not that there are no opportunities. There are many opportunities. And hoteliers, the best part about us is we can fit in anywhere. We can True. just fit in. And uh, the last but not least, the people, the students who are there, Yes, the students are extremely worried what will their future be. But trust me, the future is very bright. It is not going to be dull at all. It is only, this is only a little phase. The phase will come through. We have always gone through this. It will go through. Only thing is they have to realize that they have to make their skills better. They can't afford to be sitting down and expecting that with what we have learned, that's it. We will go ahead in life. They have to upgrade their skills. They should be ready to do just anything. We've told all our employees the same thing, that... If you call yourself a front office manager, please don't understand that you're only going to take a front office. You will be given opportunities to touch other departments and we expect you to excel in them. That is how clear we are. So with that, you can please go ahead, Sridhar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to all the panelists. Um, now, uh, this we have uh, basically been talking about uh, hospitality industry in general. Uh, now, uh, I just would like to uh, focus a little bit on maybe a part of uh, hospitality industry, which all of you uh, esteemed panelists are also a part of the standalone restaurants, which basically seem to have been the hardest hit, you know. So, uh, like, what, what uh, are the opportunities that you perceive in terms of uh, the standalone restaurants? Um, so, uh, Mr. Teneti, if you could start with that, uh, uh, with your views on this, we would be happy. Yes, yeah, standalone restaurants, uh, definitely, they, they are facing few challenges. They're going to face few challenges. But the key is, like Aditya uh, mentioned, as well as uh, Dinesh mentioned, is it's not end of it. There's a lot of opportunities. We can grow. As you all know, every day we are getting the different uh, uh, SOP, standard operating procedures, and uh, guest satisfaction. We only have to give uh, our guests, our customers, that they are 100% safe in our restaurants, and I'm sure It'll take us to places. Uh, Mr. Rai, if you could share your views with the participants of the webinar. Mr. Dinesh. Yeah, oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, like as uh, uh, restaurant like challenges, yeah, definitely biggest challenges. Now we have to work on, uh, you know, kitchen layout a um, little differently and all the following all FSCI norms, which has been released now. And they are, I think, for the knowledge, it's available on their website. And we have to uh, follow all the norms, uh, like of, uh, once I think we open for you know, in-dining also. So all kind of uh, like, uh, more of like technology we can uh, bring in. And many, I think, uh, technology uh, providers, they are working on that, that touchless service. They can just order, uh, you know, through their own mobile phone and distancing we have to take care but yes uh, and uh, what i i personally believe like we have to work on a smart menu okay we we have to take care of uh, like guest uh, so guest palette and uh, likings for a particular cuisine 
but uh, for same time like it should give us profit also so we have to trim our menu which like even i was having very big menu so now what new menu i am planning like which are like my signature dishes i am putting that and which i can make a uh, very easily in a uh, like uh, a present scenario and uh, uh, like uh, we are already talking about uh, our with our technology partners and little layout changes we are bringing in little more uh, like smart equipments we are bringing in automation kind of thing and i think definitely uh, with little more investment but yes uh, what is uh, uh, the truth or bottom line is now if it was taking uh, you know it if it, it would have ta taken one year to get get to the break even now it will take two years that is i'm sure for so uh, these are my input thoughts thank you aditya could you please share your views on this yeah now as far as stand alone restaurants are concerned um maybe my opinion is a little different i might be very biased in what i'm saying but i think um, a person who owns a group of restaurant is going to be hit harder than a stand alone restaurant does uh, because uh, of the aggregation of many costs um if you actually see i've been speaking to a lot of my friends who own a lot of restaurants in hyderabad um from when the government has slowly released that you can now start ordering online from digital platforms they have been doing fairly well i'm not saying they're doing very well they've been doing fairly well so that means people are ready and you need to understand that our dining especially a country like india our dining is social dining it is not survival dining when like the way in many other countries where they want to come out to have their lunch they want to come out to have their breakfast for survival sake that is because they have to eat a meal ours is more a social dining so uh, if you actually look at the challenges of the stand alone restaurants or restaurants as of such number one as far as the owner the biggest challenge he will face is the occupancy the tables the number of tables is going to come down by 50% that is the first biggest issue because what happens is as soon as you cut down your number of tables um, your income comes down by half directly that is depending on how much you make and how good your name is um, the second as far as the chefs are concerned uh, there is no clarity given but we we are expecting that we are not going to put dishes on the table which are going to be served to one another Uh, we'll be expecting dishes where a person, whatever he orders, will be consumed by he himself. That hasn't come out, but then there have been a lot of discussions happening in our forum, telling that this might be the next thing. And another thing is, as far as the service is concerned, um, I've been speaking to a whole bunch of software people. There's one software which is available, which we more or less closed at, where the person comes, sits on the table, scans the barcode on the table, uh, gets the menu in his cell phone, orders the items. the kot comes directly as a print out in the kitchen you do the service boy doesn't need to be there and he just has to take the food and come and deliver it on the table that is the new norm now as far as the service is concerned and yes there is challenges as far as the security where the checking is done and the second is the housekeeping i must tell you uh, we faced a, a nice funny incident recently where um, when a guest entered uh, when when our staff enter we normally do the temperature check and since ours is an open place everybody was showing 101 102 and 103 my god so we, we we couldn't understand so when we spoke to the person they said that that's because he was walking in the sunlight and that's when we realized you're supposed to check the temperature of a person below the year if he comes from an outdoor place so it's it's a it's a great learning experience for us but stand alone restaurants i don't think restaurants are going to be hit as hard as the hotels as not as hard as the hotels i think they can the restaurants will survive it's a little more harder for the hotels being a hotel i'm being very biased but it is a little difficult for the hotel because we depend a lot on the rooms than the fnb true thank you okay. all right uh, thank you thank you so much for sharing your uh, views all of you uh, now uh, my next question is uh, something that i'm sure uh, most of the students who are logged into this webinar would be concerned about you know what are the uh, survival skills or survival of the people especially students in the industry now in this condition uh, how is it how how is the how does the future look like and also how is it that they should handle this situation at this point of time if uh, you could just share your uh, views on this uh, sir vijay sir i come back to you if you could just share your views sidisha it's not the end of the world i'm sure there will be a vaccine which is going to come up and our industry is going to boom and all our students the future uh, entrepreneurs the future uh, managers who is going to uh, fly uh, 
uh, it's only the time factor which is uh, testing us. Uh, my uh, submission to all the students is be careful, uh, follow the SOPs as per the government uh, uh, SOPs as well as the industry SOPs which are given. And I'm, I'm sure in a matter of uh, just a year or just six months, uh, things will change drastically. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Dinesh? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, everyone is facing, you know, challenges on their own because all we are uh, in a war kind of, uh, you know, situation. So whether he's a student or uh, faculty or even institute uh, institutes themselves or uh, hotel owners, everyone is like, you know, uh, they, they, they have that little, you know, fear in mind. What, what kind of future we will have. But as like uh, uh, days are progressing, so things are looking positive. And even including India, many countries are working very hard to, you know, give all the solutions. Today also, I think we got some uh, good news that few people, uh, this vaccine or some kind of drug has been, uh, you know, uh, checked on uh, a few, five, six samples and they are very good from Chandigarh. I think this news is from. So uh, what I want to say, especially for students, first thing is, how we live life with a mindset, okay? So you have to work on your mindset, especially, again, I'm telling the content, what you will keep in your mind, that will that is going to drive your life. Have that positivity, and I strongly believe uh, that we must sweat every day. Work out because that also, you know, clears our, uh, uh, like, uh, toxics from body. It helps you keeping positive. And this, for a few months, we all have to survive, as Mr. Tenetti already mentioned, and definitely is smarter. The person, how you will become smart, uh, will be taken, uh, because uh, hotels will have requirement of students, and they will be like uh, the first uh, people, every hotel is going to pick, uh, pick up every time, because in, uh, we can consider as a like, you know, cost factor also. But I request all the students be ready anytime uh, you will be required in hospitality industry and you will be the first person who will be, I think, entertained. Okay. And then different Desh, I also wanted to mention one more point. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. As you, no as yeah, you all you. aware, uh, the labor which travel to their own destination, to their own states, today, uh, students are the only uh, who is going to get uh, the placements whether it is called industrial training or whatever, I think you have to mention that you have a yeah. good background. Yeah. Of I, I, I was coming to that point that that was Thank the you. next thing. Because everyone, everyone, I know, sir, you are always welcome. And uh, so uh, what what happened like present scenario, uh, as everyone has gone, you know, even very skilled people to every kind of people they have gone. So it will be students who will be given more importance because first thing they are well-educated, they are, very well, uh, you know, informed about the terminology of the hotel industry. And they are easy to train. That is the main uh, uh, factor, like what I consider. And definitely I, I myself is planning that I'll be picking up, uh, you know, uh, uh, six to 10 uh, students only. And the, the, from like beginning, from the scratch, I'll train them in total experience what I am planning. As for like what, what records or what SOPs I'm making for my restaurant. And I think it will work for every hotel or restaurant. And definitely it is going to help in us saving a lot of cost. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Aditya, your yeah. views. Yeah, um, the, for at least all the students, I don't think they should worry. They will be picked up. They, they, if they are worried about them, whether they will get a job or no, that's wrong. They will be picked up. The only thing I can say is right now, the industry is in a simple sentence, the survival of the fittest. Only the fit will survive. Nobody else will survive. Because if you look at anybody today who want to come and join the any industry, leave alone hotel industry, there are only three factors. Number one is safety and security. Number two is what kind of money I will get. And number three is what kind of knowledge I'll get. In today's world, if they keep priority as money, they won't survive. If in today's world, if they keep the priority as safety and security, that is anyway there, they don't need to worry about it. But right now in today's world, it is knowledge because finally knowledge is power. The more knowledge they get, the more opportunities they'll have, the more better hotels they'll go to or better restaurants they'll go to. They have to sharpen their knowledge. If they will, they think that, because I'll tell you, right now we've been in, in this COVID for almost now close to two months plus. 
21st March we started. Yes, right. So any student who's done a course online, attending a webinar is not going to get them anything. It'll only get them education. But if they have attended a course where they have learned something or they have upgraded their skills, they are the people who will survive. Not anybody else, not somebody who's going to sit on the chair and think that they're going to get a call and they're going to come. Because you might join, you might come, but finally you have to show yourself in the hotel. If you do not showcase yourself as someone worth, well, well worthy of joining the organization, you won't survive. It is true. Our, our industry has always been survival of fitness. Right from, right from when you come in as an industrial trainee, I remember in the good old days when industrial trainees used to go, how they used to be treated. Today they're treated like kings. Truly, I know. Truly they're treated like kings. Once upon a time, my, uh, I don't even think my senior knew my name. And neither did I ever meet my senior. Today's world is very different. So all the students, all my advice to them is they have to upgrade their skills. They have to get as much certifications as possible and make their resume strong. The stronger the resume, the better the future. Don't look at money. Money will come tomorrow. But look today at education. Sharpen your skills. That's all I can say. Thank you. Um, um, but one, one last aspect that I would like to ask you about is uh, now basically when we speak about good service, we basically used to talk about having an eye contact with the guests, smiling at him and all those small things. Now uh, with the mask coming in and it being here to stay. So uh, don't you think it becomes a little more difficult for us, you know, to, uh, to show the hospitality that we would like to show to our uh, guests. And how is it that we uh, try and win their trust when it's a little difficult to do that? Um, so, uh, uh, Vijay sir, could you please uh, throw some light on this? See, Sirisha, now the body language. See, we, we are uh, in, in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We really don't know how we're going to take it. Uh, the flexibility, the style of operations will change and uh, the technology will change. So automatically the guest who is coming to dine with us or going to stay with us, he knows what he's going through. So I'm sure he will understand by the body language, by the technology. I think I'm, my uh, colleagues will uh, throw a little light on it and elaborate on it. Yeah, sure, sir. Yes, Mr. Dinesh. Yeah, uh, as Mr. Kennedy said, like, Definitely like, uh, see eye contact, definitely uh, it will be there whenever we are, uh, you know, interacting with each other. But when uh, you are wearing, this is new jewelry, you know, now we are getting designer mask and everything. So definitely, I think we will be getting matching uh, yeah. mask with the uniform and all that, yeah. syncing with theme and all that on like on lighter part. But whenever like we smile, the kind of vibes we uh, you know, okay. emit from our body that interacts with the guest actually. Yeah. What, what, what is my experience? Mm. And if I'm not smiling, definitely my face will be, you know, frowning mm. or this kind of thing. Mm. So definitely smile has to be part of that because that is coming from your inside and you are welcoming this and it will just go through, you know, your aura, what you create and you take customer definitely is like six feet apart or something, but definitely he will realize that this guy is welcoming me very well. And that's what I mentioned before also, we human being will be integral part of hospitality industry. Otherwise, there is no hospitality industry at all. But yes, definitely people are working on that. What kind of body language should be there? And uh, 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 like it should be, and that will be part of their training when we are, you know, preparing those people. Okay. Uh, yes, Adil. Yeah. Um, I actually want to add one small statement here. Um, in the good old days, whenever you end up sneezing, you end up saying, uh, bless you. Um, today's sneeze is a very different sneeze. As soon as you sneeze, the first thing you say is, oh my God, what exactly is going to happen? Yes, I understand that the hotel industry, the smile is very important. But when you're left to uh, a situation where there's no, there's no other choice, there's no other choice. Um, it's like this. Um, when a guest comes to a hotel, he'll either come for the restaurant, he'll come for the services, or he'll come to check into the rooms. The first thing in their mind is that word called fear. There is always that one thing called fear, which is in the mind. And it is only us who are at the front who can get that out of them. And I think finally, our eyes should speak more than the, our face can. That's the only thing. And finally, it's all about the words coming out of the mouth. As long as you can make your guests feel comfortable, I don't think there's anything more to it. Uh, 
Thanks. Um, so uh, now, could we have a couple of questions, sir? Uh, sure. So, yeah. Yes, that'd be great. So, yes, so that'd, that'd the, be great. The first question that I have over here is from uh, Shivangi Yadav. Now she says, uh, what, what uh, wouldn't the work become more difficult for the housekeeping department, uh, especially when they're dealing with room service in a hotel? So um, would you like to throw some light on this? Sir? See, recently we've got a few standard operating procedures. Housekeeping, yes, definitely we will have uh, uh, a different style of uh, operations like uh, the government of India, the most of the uh, hotel industry has mentioned that uh, after the guest checks out, the room uh, will be uh, sterilized for 24 hours. Thereafter, they're going to allocate the room. And uh, uh, SOPs are going to change. Only the request will be kept in front of the, uh, in front of the door and uh, daily services will not be there like airport hotels and so on only one day service will be given uh, turned down and uh, uh, when it comes to room service i think uh, only our indians uh, we are used to having uh, dining in the rooms otherwise uh, all over the world uh, they come down to the coffee shop and the restaurants for dining so uh, uh, Aditya and Dinesh uh, will add on more points. Yeah, what I feel and what I'm hearing from uh, like other uh, like uh, big people from the industry, the room service norms will change. What I heard, I can share here. Like it is going to be knock and drop, or uh, uh, like after order, they have to uh, they will, there will be a counter. They have to grab their food and take it to the room. Okay, it, the two choices will be given. As far as it is concerned, like uh, from housekeeping, housekeeping's role, definitely like uh, already uh, norms have been, I think it has come out from SSAI and they have defined uh, like all the department, how they have to work in this situation. So definitely our own habits and the uh, like uh, total work style is going to change and we, we all have to get trained for that and it is going to uh, happen that way. So as far as I'm concerned, um, I should thank her for that question. Um, only point I can raise here is the housekeeping will not work harder. They'll work better. <laughs> They'll definitely work better. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the way it is. Because finally, the way the norms which are put now are actually the norms which any hotel should follow in reality. That's the, that's the norms they should follow. Because finally, for us safety, this is not the only virus in the world. This is the only virus which has hit hard. So the way I look at it, it's not about just working hard, it's definitely working better. Like I said, sharpening your skills. And as far as room service, yes, all the points have been raised. Um, I mean, all the answers have been given, but all I can say is room service will definitely be a key, especially we are expecting it during the breakfast time is what uh, we are, we don't, we are not expecting many people to come to the coffee shop during breakfast, but rather order in the room one day before. That's all I can say, thank you. You have to unmute yourself. You unmute yourself. Uh, any more questions that the participants have? Please either uh, put it in the chat box or uh, you can raise your hand to ask. Uh... Um, so the a question that I have uh, got is that uh, when the industry starts its operations, um, it is uh, the things are not going to be the same for the hotels. So what happens is the students are not going to be the first choice for recruitment since it is going to be the displaced staff who will be the first choice to get into jobs. So it will be delayed for the students. So uh, a little bit of worry, sir, don't you think is uh, fair for us is what is the question that has been put up? I don't think so. I don't think so. They will be the first uh, choice for us who's trained uh, in one of the reputed colleges. And uh, uh, I'm sure uh, that's, not a, that's, going, that's not going to be a challenge. I'm sure Aditya as an entrepreneur, 
uh, he will uh, able to tell you more on this. Dinesh, please, please, Dinesh. Uh, yeah, okay. We are going uh, like turn wise. Yes, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so it doesn't matter uh, because uh, as per the points, I just yes, yes, I understand. Over. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So anyway, uh, I'll also give my views here, but uh, like uh, I'm speaking to many of uh, my clients and other restaurant owners. So what happened, like everyone has retained their core team and their uh, number is very, very small. Uh, like uh, uh, their main chef or, you know, uh, service side, yes, uh, like most of the people, I think, uh, not kept. Uh, I'm talking about the standalone properties and as per like their uh, retention uh, you know capabilities but here again this is uh, i'm not saying positive but this will be important that everyone as i already mentioned that everyone will pick up students first and then at, under this or with this core team they will develop these people to take because i'm telling you cost factor is a very very big factor here and where like i think students are the first thing even as an entrepreneur i i see that I'm, I'm talking from uh, from my perspective that I will be the one like uh, as per other than my core team, only students will be there who will to whom I'll train and uh, make use of them. As far as we are concerned, um, I don't think that's a big point of worry. I really don't think students should be worried. Uh, what is what's the problem is that they're hearing the news here, there, and they expect that this is what is going to happen. That is what's going to happen. But finally, what the reality is, pass your resume across, you will realize how much you're in demand. Just put your resume across. Don't listen to what the news has to say. Don't listen to what the news has to say. You'll be surprised if you are intelligent, if you know how to talk, if you know how to greet, and if you know how to tackle and ready for change, there is no way out. You will get a job. Don't worry about you coming in. And I'll tell you, when you, especially uh, colleges, you just put out that industrial trainees are ready to come. You watch how many people are coming out for grabs. It will literally go up to the extent of bidding. Almost to that extent. So I don't think it's a point of worry. Only thing you should worry about is how good am I at my job? You are good, you'll grow. You're not good, you can't survive this industry. If we can't survive the COVID, you definitely cannot survive us. Again, I will add again or repeat rather like uh, your uh, mental and physical fitness uh, will take you forward. And please be ready with that. Every day, little, little knowledge and the workout will definitely uh, make you like, you know, first choice of the all, uh, you know, hotels and restaurants. Very true. I also wanted to mention without these students, without these jobs, there are partners. We cannot survive. So therefore, as Aditya mentioned, the right candidate will definitely uh, be a uh, Benefited. Uh, the next question that we have is, um, uh, has the uh, treatment of waste changed during uh, COVID and after COVID now? Will it change? So, uh, your uh, views, sir. Can you repeat the question? I didn't uh, follow you. The management of waste in the hotels. So is it going to change post COVID because now awareness about health and hygiene and sanitation and all these things has gone up much more. So the Correct. waste management in the hotels, is it going to be changing uh, during and after COVID? No, there is going to be a change. Definitely. Uh, as uh, Aditya mentioned earlier, uh, the systems and procedures like how housekeeping are supposed to work, they are not working today if they follow the sops they will give the best so therefore uh, before and after the sops will definitely develop and they have to follow and believe me uh, the f flexibility in our operations are going to change mm -hmm. and there is a new uh, learning it's it's a process every day there's going to be a new things will uh, come Dinesh. Yeah, uh, I second uh, Mr. Tanati and I request uh, uh, Mr. Chinnam Reddy and Mr. Narendra here to like uh, get that FSSAI, I think workshop is going on now and every day I see that FHRI and different platforms are conducting where these kind of things are, you know, they are conducting the certificate courses 
and every day it is happening. So please, uh, I think you can arrange for your faculty and students. So most of the things they will get to know what changes are coming. Dr. Pashupati every day personally is present in every webinar and describing uh, everything. I think it will be a very good uh, uh, like thing to do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next question that we have is um, uh, put up by a student who says- Did I, did I miss on anything? I'm sorry. I think I missed. Yeah, yeah, you. Um, you yeah, you, you, yeah. you, you can put, share your views. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we only have two types of garbages, dry and wet. Okay. It'll remain the same, mm -hmm. but definitely we have a COVID patient in-house. It's a different ballgame. That's the only thing I, the way I look at it. Then bio, bio waste is the next only option. That's, that's as far as uh, the garbage is concerned. There mm -hmm. won't be anything more than that, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Um, so the, the next question that has been put up by uh, the students is, uh, sir, this is a batch that is going, that is uh, graduating this year. Uh, they have uh, the management trainee programs that had been uh, offered to this, most of the students have uh, stand withdrawn now. So now uh, what is the further steps that the students can take by themselves in order to help themselves accelerate their career? Aditya, I think you have to answer that. I don't think there should be any challenge, believe me. I don't think there is any challenge. It's a matter of time. I think all students will be called immediately. Mm. Believe me, without mm. these students, without these management trainees, without this uh, campus interviews, we cannot survive. Mm. This is what I think as a consultant and uh, my past experience. Mm. So is there any uh, particular kind of knowledge that they can brush up on while they are at it now? The students, can they, you know, look up, uh, look at some knowledge that they can uh, uh, acquire or some skills that they can develop at this point in time where they have some free time? A while ago, um, um, Dinesh has mentioned there's so many courses, the certification right. courses yes. are going yes. on. Mm. Uh, believe me, knowledge is power. At this age, I'm willing to learn. Likewise, even the students, instead of sitting idle, they have to gain knowledge and uh, they'll be number one. As uh, Aditya mentioned, if you have talent, if you have knowledge, you will be the first person to pick up by the sure. industry. Yes. Dinesh, please. So as I like uh, already mentioned, uh, like, you know, what is happening when uh, this action has been taken from hotels or uh, uh, like uh, they have taken a back type or uh, send messages to institutions that it is postponed or cancelled uh, their management training program or something. But that time, everyone was in panic and every, they were like, they are like, you know, big chains of hotels. Like suddenly everything was like, you know, nobody had uh, any light that in which direction they have to think. I think uh, Mr. Aditya will be agree with me. But now everyone is re-evaluating. Okay. So again, I emphasize on this that students are going to be very, very important part of any chain, any hotel. You believe me, because this is already, uh, people are talking about it. Again, like uh, two reasons, again, I'm repeating this. Uh, two reasons, like uh, they are easy to train with new, uh, you know, SOPs and all. They, they, they are coming with the almost fresh mind and they, they have that basic knowledge of hospitality also, which is required. Only thing, they have to be ready. That when they are picked up mentally, physically, they should be ready and definitely, uh, again, I suggest they must uh, 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 like, uh, you know, assimilate this new habit and information, which like helping us to combat coronavirus and uh, more it will help uh, like giving a fearless service or experience to customer. Like when you are interviewed, you should not uh, sound that you are under fear, right? So you should sound confident. Yes, uh, because I have those habits. I'm wearing mask every time. I'm sanitizing every time. I'm smiling still. And I have that stain of positivity in my mind. So I think with these few things, you will be picked up and trained. Thank you. Uh, these are students who've done both tourism and hospitality or only hospitality students? Uh, they are both students. Uh, they are both. They are okay. Both. Okay, perfect. Now, as far as they are concerned, they have only two options. One is tourism and one is hospitality. The travel, when it comes to the travel, it's a different ballgame altogether. I really have no experience in that. So I won't be able to question there, but as far as hospitality is concerned, if they want to brush up their skills, 
they have to brush it up learning they can go on to a site called udemy u d e m y there are a lot of courses available there which are short term let them go let them have a look at it i think they should take even digital marketing as an option you'll be surprised that is very strong because that is the next future digital marketing would be one option i would definitely suggest to all the students because it's not difficult but you have to have a flair for it not everybody can do it you need to have a little flair for it sure. and as far as them thinking that they will not be called back by the hotels um, you can take my mail id from sirisha you'll be surprised i'll call you back so i don't think you should worry at all i will call you see when when i'm only telling i will call you you should be sure that every other hotelier will call you so don't have the fear fear is some uh, fear is always that of the unknown so you do not know whether you are safe or not that's why you have fear i am telling you today don't be fearful all you have to do is just compromise a little and you'll go places you'll definitely go places like the way we are saying it'll take us one one and a half years for us to come back into our back to our normal the same is the case with you it'll take you also one one and a half years to get back on track as to where you want to project yourself it will take but you will learn a lot um the next question that we have over here here is uh, that in the present situation uh, with uh, covid uh, are there any steps that the hotels are planning to take in order to um, serve the guests in banquets because banquets as of now is an area where uh, there is there are a lot of challenges so is are there some certain things being planned in banquets recently the hotel association association have already discussed about the same subject and uh, our social distancing will be maintained and uh, if there is a space for 100 uh, people uh, a banquet space only 50 people will be taken not not even 50 it's, it's about 25% 30% and uh, the uh, service standards are going to be uh, different and uh, there's going to be a price escalation uh, uh, in banquets because mm -hmm. of the operating cost is going to be very very high uh, at the present scenario mm -hmm. thank you yeah i think total experience of banquet is going to change uh, like uh, then again uh, it depends uh, how like uh, how many uh, number restriction is always already there i think by government and uh, it has to be followed and again uh, i am telling the all the sops are in place now for hotels slowly things will open but yeah definitely big gatherings and all they will be avoided but i think few of few hotels already started banqueting with small numbers taking permission from uh, you know authorities and uh, they have already uh, changed the style of serving food to the customers like i was just going through a video in uh, thailand somewhere like in a big uh, marriage yeah they have their their sub food in in boxes and i i even my idea is like you know you can plan bento boxes very beautifully okay that is my idea and i'm i'm going to experiment on it more because in or any cuisine you can serve in that okay it should it looks beautiful and it will be like you know uh, you just arrange it at one place and there, there will be no touch guests themselves can pick up so again that all operating line will change like with the, like where we can have like uh, definitely that feel of celebration should be maintained and at the same time all these safety norms uh, can be followed as far as banquets are concerned yes can i oh, yeah. yeah yeah please um, go ahead as far as banquets are concerned like mentioned as as of now the government has put the limitation at 50 we are expecting in due course it's not this year at least for the year 2020 in our state that is telangana i am not expecting it to exceed more than 150 i don't think they will push more than 150 because by the month they are increasing by 25 or 40 or 50 right now it's at 50 um only thing is if you have an open area in your hotel it is a win win situation that is number one because people are extremely worried about these enclosed places um number two as far as banquets are concerned yes social distancing in terms of tables will be put yes uh, the demand right now seems to be weddings you'll be surprised this is for your information that for the month of june uh from the 10th to the end of the month i'm having 15 weddings which have asked me 50 people weddings so weddings will happen wedding seems to be the next big demand right now everybody seem to be very busy to get married and uh, as far as the facilities in the banquets yes what we are looking at is 
pushing more live counters where there's no contact of the guest. That is number one. We are trying our best to push a lot of live counters. And number two is we are looking at table service in total. So which means uh, the person on the table will select what he wants and that would be served on the table. I think that would be the next big fashion, like the way it's in uh, foreign country, like in the country like US, most of the weddings, they actually have table service. Everything comes on the table for them rather than them going to the buffet. I think that will become the next norm, at least for a while. Because we as Indians, we have a problem. We like to go to places where there's noise. We like it hot in our hand. <laughs> we, we just love it. We, we do not like something being served on the table. We like it to be seen. And we like to select what we want. We want to put sweet into something which is uh, chili. So that is how we are. But that will cap come in due course. But as of now, I think it will be only table service in banquets. And the limitation would not exceed more than 100 for sure. Or max 150. Okay. And uh, yes, before I forget, one piece of advice for it, if they are hoteliers here, uh, they are guests who are asking, the government has given a restriction of 50 people. Is it okay at any point of time if there are 50 people in the hall? This point of discussion has been coming. Uh, my advice to them is tell the guests very clearly to stick to 50 and not more than 50. Because um, if tomorrow there is, God forbid, a case which has come as positive, they will ask for the list with the numbers. And if the list comes as above 50, that's a little troublesome. So if there are hotel owners here, please tell your guests very clearly because we are very categoric with our guests. We are not going to allow more than 50 people. in. Are we going to take the guest list? Yes, mandatory, right at the security. First is the security checkpoint. At the security, it is mandatory to take the guest name, their temperature reading and the cell phone number. All right, I just that wanted the yes. students to know about yes. it. Yes, <laughs> it is mandatory. We have to tick whether they are room guests, whether they've come for facilities or for uh, uh, banquets. And then if in banquets, which banquet, and then we have to mention the number. And believe me, every single guest has to record. Yes, it's mandatory. <laughs> mandatory. You will have a problem with the VIP guests, but then that's, that's a we different We have to live with it. We are in India. <laughs> very true. Very true. Okay. Um, uh, the next question that's been asked is, uh, are there any changes expected in the laundry, whether in-house laundry or uh, as an outsourced uh, laundry uh, due to the COVID situation? Aditya, would you like to answer that? Yes. Um, laundry, yes. There is a lot of change. Um, uh, right now, Protocols are going to be very, very strict. If somebody has outsourced their laundry, they are visiting their site and seeing and learning the protocols. And uh, disinfectants is very necessary. And more than anything else, um, the staff in the laundry department, I think they are the ones who are actually at the biggest risk. They are the ones who are actually at the biggest risk because the laundry goes through a very long process by the time it reaches. And then again, goes through another protocol to go all the way back to the housekeeping department. So, Protocols are changing, but these protocols already exist from before. Like few few people, they like to wash it by hand. By hand is gone. It is only machine washed. Tumble drying is mandatory. That is where the heaters are used. And that is where the tumble dryer is the process where actually a certain eradication does happen. And what we are doing is we are putting um, Dettol or we are putting Savlon as a mixture with whatever is already there. Because since I have a hospital and the hospital laundry also is done in a separate area for us. So we, we follow the protocol as per a hospital, if that is required by you, I'll definitely share it with you. You can share it to whoever's asking you. Okay. Uh, now, uh, now, when we're talking about laundry, um, one of the biggest risk areas is where the collection of the laundry uh, takes place, the linen that goes to the laundry. So like, how is that uh, being handled? I would like to pass this because I don't have any experience okay. and not thought about it. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, Currently, the protocol, which at least used to be there at one point of time, that is before COVID, was when the person goes to the room, they take it, they put it in a, uh, the cart which they are getting. That comes back to the housekeeping department. It is put in the housekeeping department and it is got down. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for the information of, uh, again, hotel owners. Um, there are nowadays biodegradable bags which are available. So, one one bag, these bags are uh, bags which get uh, disintegrated with water. So, People who have got the budget, of course, it is a little expensive, but what they're going to do is they're going to give that to a housekeeping person. So when the housekeeping person enters the room, he takes it, puts it in the bag and zips the bag or rather closes the bag. This bag is taken and sent directly and thrown into the washing machine. You don't need to remove the material back out of the bag. It is just thrown in the washing machine that degrades itself automatically. Maybe if hoteliers, because I do not know whether many hoteliers know about this, but this is available. 
because this is the protocol few hospitals are slowly following that might come because like they say contamination we do not want contamination to go from one place to another yeah. maybe this would help because the bag it will go only as a plastic bag nothing else this is a great information for us oh, also thank you if yeah. you want me to pass the information to you, I'll take your number anyway, Dinesh. Yeah, as well as yeah. Vijay. I'll get in touch. I'll, yeah. I'll pass it on to you. That will actually you. be very helpful. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Aditya. Okay. Um, I think... Um, yeah, I think... Uh, we are done with most of the questions. Some, the, the rest are all basically repetitions, so I wouldn't want to go into them again. Right. Thank you. I must tell one small point, Sirisha. Um, it's about uh, the restaurants in the city. Mm -hmm. Another big challenge which you're going to face, of course, I must tell Vijay and Dinesh this. Uh, mm -hmm. Friends of mine who own restaurants are having a very difficult time to tell a guest to wear a mask. And yes. I must tell you this. It has come to me as a surprise because for the last two mm -hmm. days we've been having discussions. Uh, that seems to be the next big challenge for us, telling a guest that he should wear a mask all the time. But I think in, when in-dining is started, it does not make sense also. That's what I'm also working on that. Because how a person will eat or drink if they are wearing masks. But when it is like just take away, definitely everyone should wear. And that is what I think we all are working upon that to get some solution of that. Yes. We are also hoping the same. I think the distance will work if we are away. So there is no need for it. True. I agree. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I think uh, that's it. Uh, all the questions have been answered very, very Perfect. well. Thank you so much. Um, now, uh, before we close, uh, I would just like to thank all of you uh, for sharing the points that you have shared. There have been wonderful takeaways for uh, even us, not just the students, even the faculty and uh, the others who have participated in this webinar. For example, conversion of... Uh, Fear to learning, you know, uh, don't, don't just stay stuck at fear. Uh, is, there's a resound somewhere. There's a resound. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, conversion of uh, fear, don't just get stuck at fear. Make sure that you learn along with, in order to overcome that fear and also. Uh, upgrading the knowledge and your SOPs. I think that was a very good uh, valid point for all the students and even for the, all the professionals because I'm sure their learning never ends. Uh, and uh, the safety of the guests that has been mentioned, you know, I think that's one of the best uh, steps that can happen in order to win the trust of the guest, to make him want to come back to you to win that trust. And uh, the survival of the fittest that has been mentioned. You know, the, now you do not, uh, as you said, you do not really become the fittest unless and until you sharpen your knowledge. So I think that was a wonderful uh, point that has been put across. Uh, so uh, before, uh, so uh, before we close, I would just like to know if uh, any of uh, uh, my esteemed panelists would like to add something. Otherwise, I would like to request our director to say a few words. So. I'm done. I think people are tired of hearing me. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. I, can, I can just remind that what already I mentioned because uh, what I'm doing, like it's all about again, mentally and your physical fitness will take you forward and everyone utilize this time, even uh, do some sort of a spiritual activity, like some kind of prayer or meditation or something which is required. And it is all brain uh, which takes our life forward. So this is it. And it has been wonderful to be part of this. Uh, you know, uh, great webinar. Thank you. I only wanted to request all the students and everybody be positive. And, and it will take us to places. Thank you very much. It, it definitely is a very nice thing that you've done a webinar like this. And you're actually ending up teaching and teaching a lot of students what they're supposed to do, what they're not supposed to do. Because finally, they all should know what the future is. They should know because what you read in the books and what you see outside are two different things. Sure. It's Thank a you. different world out there. I agree. Truly, yeah. it's Absolutely. a different world out there. Sure. Sir, director, sir, would you, sir, please unmute me, unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dinesh, uh, Mr. Aditya, and uh, Vijay ji, for uh, wonderful information here. And I'm sure that you always have well wishers of the Nitha Bondi. 
and we are continuing to do something in the future also and uh, thank you for a good information because a lot of people are worried about like what will happen like you know the covid and all sort of things like that and definitely is a good uh, positive thing here i think uh, people will take it uh, very positively and take it forward thank you once again thank you for giving us opportunity thank, thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. so we will be having a group photo so please stay please don't leave and uh, aditya there is a request from the students for you they want uh, they also want to be a part of the guidelines if you can share it with them sure the, i'll can I send it across to, be, to you yeah sure you can do okay. it i'll text you my email id perfect, send it perfect. across i have to have fssai as well as the second one is uh, for accommodation yeah. fest sure i'm getting right. messages where they have requested that so please oh, send sure. it across to me please that's very uh, nice. and uh, um, so If, to bring the okay. session to an end i would only like to tell the students that uh, you know uh, challenges will be there at every step any challenge that is accepted and worked on becomes an opportunity so it's for you to create an opportunity please make sure you do that uh, thank you and stand by for the photograph ayyo nadi la ochindi Things are done, right? Okay. Basically, everything is done. Okay. Fine. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, all of you, for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Sudisha. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Sudisha. Well done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, all you, panelists, all Thank you, all participants. Thank you. Thank you, Sudisha. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank